Let's begin. Uh, here is what we have so far. There's a lot of classic WoW news that came out this morning, uh, November 18th, about little things they're going to be doing different with the new fresh that's coming about. So I, I've talked about it a lot. I, I'm a big believer in having to account for the times. I have my own personal opinion on things uh, and how they should be done. And I've been very vocal about that over the years. I'm, I'm actually not like a big no changes guy. You know, like there's a lot of people that are like, no changes, no changes. But, I, but I'm not a huge no changes guy. And you can look on some of my old videos and, and you can see that. Uh, they, like that old like, wow, classic might need. Yeah, some changes, some changes. Like some just account for the times. Okay, account for the times, right? Uh, add it to the OP. Well, let's start here. Okay, updated November 18th. After working through a great deal, let me make it bigger for us because we are old. After working through a great deal of player feedback, we've decided to provide some additional changes that'll be part of Anniversary Realms. Instant mail between characters, good change. Uh, the removal of the buff debuff limit, plus there's some, there's some things to talk about with this, but good. There's pros and cons to this, and I don't want to go into it too much because I've talked about it a lot before. I think a lot of people are really going to like this, and I don't think it'll snowball out of control on its own, uh, but it has a lot to do with like the, the economy and gold sinks and making sure the world feels alive. But there's there's like counter arguments to what I say, right? Like I'm like, okay, well you need people in the capital city, right? Like go back to the city to respec and do all this stuff. Like I think, honestly, I would be 100% no question good with dual spec if it was, uh, if it was as simple as, if it was as simple as go back to the capital city and just talk to the trainer one of your respect. I'd be 100% no question good with it. But here's the alternative, okay? Here's the counter argument to, to my own argument. And it's like, okay, if you want people alive and in this, or if you want the world to feel alive, people in the cities, people that interact and, and like cross paths, right? What I would call a third party interaction is just like seeing somebody else as like a third party interaction. If you want that, then that's fine. Hold on, let me, let me kind of rephrase. I was going to say something, and then let me rephrase it. Okay, so if you want that, that's great. But you can, or sorry, but you can't, you can't get that if somebody is literally not even logged in. That is the counter argument to what I'm saying. If it's if it's literally keeping people from playing the game because of the the added like stress and just how daunting it is to have to respec and need need to pay for the gold and all that stuff to respec every time. Fair uh, argument, actually. I just hope that the cost of dual spec is significant enough to where it's like an upfront payment for the gold sink. And really, if you're somebody like me, you're gonna save a lot of gold. That's exactly why I stopped playing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fair argument, right? Like for me, for years, back in the day, uh, private servers, before I started streaming, everything. I mean, I would always, I would I would always just respect constantly. If dual spec stopped you, stopped you from playing, you're a bum. Well, different people play differently, right? Like. That you might feel that way, but there's a, there's a lot of people that I think uh, it just, people just play the game differently, and I think that's fine, right? People have different interests, or they play the game a different way. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I feel about dual spec. I'm indifferent on this. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, even though I'm not a big fan of it, I'm like a massive, probably more than 99% of people watching this. I will benefit more from dual spec personally than a lot of those people, but it's whenever I talk about this kind of stuff, it's not really about me. I, I, I like to think about everything in like the grand scheme of things, the whole scope. And maybe I'm wrong. I think if you, I think if it kind of like stops here, then it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, I'll talk about the removal of the buff debuff limit. I do think this is really good. It is so frustrating when you have druids in raid throwing you a heal, like you have a heal over time, like a regrowth or a rejuve or something like that. And then it ends up dropping your buff. You're the main tank of the, of the raid. And then you have a renew come up on you as a priest or like a power word shield. And you're at the buff cap and then it pushes another buff off. That's like, maybe you lose a world buff. It ruins the whole week. It's actually the worst thing in the world. So big W on that. Uh, the debuff limit is one of those things where, okay, hey, warlocks, you can't do your thing. Hey, shadow priest, you can't do your thing. Hey, paladins, make sure you're not judging too much. Hey, consecrate has an invisible buff that pushes stuff off of things. Or sorry, pushes buffs off of enemies. You can't do that. You can't play your class. Really, really bad. And this was mostly a technical limitation. However, something that needs to be done in regards to the debuff limit, Blizzard needs to account for the increased player power from the buff limit being increased and the uh, the bosses and the targets, the enemies being weaker because of more debuffs. I, I think that's something that should be accounted for. And if that means just as simple as increasing their health or something like that, 
classic wow raids are easy and this I, I they're supposed to be easy i get it man i get all that but i don't want to feel like i'm doing nothing because when you feel like you're doing nothing it feels like you're that you're just doing chores and that's something that we liked so much about that private server experience and you're starting to see this right now with some of the changes that we're seeing being made we're almost getting kind of that like private server experience that we had where they went and they did what accounted for the times and said hey here is this little thing that should be different because we're in the year, you know, 20 XD6 and, you know, all our bases exploded or whatever. Okay. It's, it, we're in the year 2024. And there's certain things that are different now due to the expectations. Wait, 20 XD6 was, uh, was, uh, was, was Homestar, wasn't it? What was the year from all your base? I don't understand what he's saying, but S-Fan is so cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. The issue here. Oh, I think it is 2101. Yeah, I think it was 2101. So, so the private server experience that we had did exactly that. They accounted for the times and they, they, they monitored the game really closely to try and give you the best version of Classic WoW that they possibly could. And, and we're kind of starting to see that come about now, which honestly I'm kind of excited about. The idea of this is kind of what I, I really wanted years ago and I think what a lot of people wanted. And I also think it's what a number of people wanted, but they had no idea that they wanted. Why? Because over time, like you just kind of forget things. Oh, I played classic when I was a kid. I'm gonna play private servers. Oh, private servers are so fun. Wow, I forgot how fun, fun vanilla was. Wow, I know so much about the game now. I can play the game differently. I can do all these things I never got to do years ago. But the, the version of the game that they are now playing is different. The version of vanilla WoW that we played in 2019 was different. These are there's just straight up a different version of the game entirely, right? There's, there's, there's lots of little things that add up that make the game different than what it was. Was. <clears throat> that make the game different than what it was, right? When they when they make the game different than what it was, at this point, you kind of need to make sure that uh, it's done correctly or done in the best way possible. And I think that's what they're trying to do here. Uh, and I hope they do a good job at it. So, continuing. As part of our ongoing Warcraft 30th anniversary celebration, we're excited to announce that all new Fresh Wild Classic Realms will go live on November 21st at 2. Okay, four o'clock this Thursday, Texas time. Realm size and rule sets. Nowadays, an individual WoW Classic Realm can hold many more players at a single time than ever before. For our new fresh anniversary realms, we're limiting the total number of realms to choose uh, from at launch to only one of each rule set, normal PVE, PVP, and hardcore. This gives both new and returning players the confidence in selecting a realm with a rule set of their choosing, knowing that it will be healthy and sustainable. We may choose to open additional realms for a given rule set, if needed to address player demand, but it is our intention to limit the total number of realms to as few realms as possible. When we first launch, we expect some queuing. As we will gradually increase realm capacity caps in real time to fit the number of players logging in, we ask for your patience and understanding if you encounter, to que encounter a queue right after launch time. Burning Crusade Classic. We're particularly excited to reveal that normal PvE and PvP fresh anniversary realms will progress to Burning Crusade Classic. After we progress through the Classic Era content phases, this will be our first visit back to the start of this beloved expansion since its launch in 2021. Woo! Burning Crusade! Here's what I wanted. I, I was hoping they would have done a Burning Crusade fresh. I would be head over heels if they did a Burning Crusade fresh. I, 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 I would have rather had that than the vanilla fresh that they're doing now. I talked about like the economy stuff, right? There's there's like a lot of there's there's a lot of damage that the server takes in the two years. Or actually, I don't know how long it's gonna be. Maybe maybe like a year. I don't know how long they're gonna do it. I don't know how long it's gonna take uh, for them to go to Burning Crusade Classic. I mean, I think a healthy speed is like a year and a half. That's faster than it was years ago. Anyway, our new hardcore anniversary realms will not progress to Burning Crusade Classic. But yeah, long story short, uh, I mean, I I'm excited for Burning Crusade. Like I would like to see, I, I would, I want an arena again, man. I like, I, dude, I miss me and Grayson. Freaking, hey, let's get like freaking settle and do like when we had like the crew, we had settle, doop, me, Grayson, and Eric. You know, we I mean, we had a we 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 would rotate all kinds of guys out, right? It was it was super good. But they're not gonna go hardcore, or sorry, they're not gonna take Burning Crusade to hardcore or hardcore to Burning Crusade, which I think is reasonable. Uh, changes in oh, okay, okay, here we go. No changes in changes philosophy at launch. With WoW Classic Anniversary Realms, our goal is to preserve the spirit of what makes Classic WoW special. While we're not strictly following a no-changes policy for these Anniversary Realms, our intention is to closely mirror the Classic Vanilla experience with minimal deviation from the 2019 version. See, I don't know why, I, I don't know why they said this, because the changes they've made already actually changes the game quite a bit. 
Like, do they not consider the changes that they're making to be that big? Because these are these are actually some fairly substantial changes. Like, just, just this alone, the the debuff limit stuff, the dual spec. But maybe maybe what they're talking about specifically is class design. Yeah, but this is this is substantial. They've they've made some pretty substantial changes. From a from a game design standpoint, it's it's way different. From a class design standpoint, well, okay, they haven't really changed much. Uh, since the launch of WoW Classic in 2019, changes have occurred for reasons primarily focused on game health and game cohesion. Yes, these changes have included reporting system improvements, dethroning system for transferring guild leadership, addition of Chrono Boon Displacer. This is something that should have been in from the beginning, uh, allowing it to stack to 10, improved PvP honor ranking system. I, I haven't tried this. Do people like the new honor system? I, I always had an idea of how they should re revamp the honor system. The idea that I had in the past, and, and the honor system is very confusing. Uh, so I'm gonna try and make this as, as short and sweet as possible. You have a, a, an amount of decay that occurs whatever rank you're at. You have a certain amount of decay. And what you need to do in order for you to gain honor for that week is you need to beat your decay. You, if you want to gain rank points that week, you have to gain enough honor to go up in the standings high enough to beat your decay. And if you can beat your decay, that's when that bar moves up. What my idea was is that you take the decay, you remove it, and you turn it into a threshold. And that's pretty much it. So there's no more decay, but you have like an RP gain threshold instead. And effectively, the only change that would... That would, well, that would make two changes, really. One, if you have to take a break, let's say you have to move, your computer breaks, internet goes out, something happens, you don't go from like, I'm, I'm field marshal, and then, I, and then I miss a week, I can't play for a week, and then all of a sudden my entire rank is, is blown, and then I have to rank for like a whole nother month or something. If, uh, like if you rank 13, you're trying to get to 14, for example. Uh, or the other thing, and this is the thing that's weird, is when you have a bunch of grand marshals walking around as like sergeants, it's like, look, if I'm grand marshal, like, I wanted to say Grand Marshal above my head, you know? Um, oh no, there's still decay that happens. Okay, there's decay that happens within the rank itself, but you can't down rank because of it. That's, okay, so that's, so it's almost what I wanted. Yeah, see, I wanted there to be no decay at all, but I, I mean, whatever. The big thing is not down ranking. Wait, there is no decay at all? Oh, so they, wait, so they changed it again? Hell yeah, okay, that's sick, that's badass. Okay, well, hell yeah, dude. They changed it twice and now there's zero decay. Hell yeah, dude, I didn't even know they changed it a second time. How did I miss that news? Now we know who to blame. <laughs> no, dude, hell yeah. That's exactly what I always wanted. For the first time ever, the new anniversary hardcore realms will progress through the classic era phases of content. And this means that when Molten Core unlocks on the new normal and PvP realms, it'll unlock on new hardcore realms at the same time. We look forward to seeing how players prepare to take on this content as it unlocks with each phase. Please note that PvP Battlegrounds and Battlemasters are disabled and will not unlock when non-hardcore realms reach their battleground phases. Okay. You skipped a section? Oh, I did. You're right. Uh, I'll go back and read Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We expect all else to remain the same. Paladins will not be able to bubble hearth. Oh, okay, yeah. This is, all, this is hardcore stuff. Okay. Um... Let's go back here. User interface and looking for group. In WoW Classic, players have often used a variety of out-of-game tools and methods to group with, with players. I could have sworn I've read this part before. Oh wait, is, is this like an amended? Oh, this is, an, this is an amendment to the original post, isn't it? To support group play, we're introducing a looking for group tool, which will allow players to create, join, and browse parties manually. We're also adding a services chat channel. Yeah, because I remember this. Yeah, I remember this specifically because the services chat channel is essentially world chat from private servers. Private servers added a world chat which is really cool because people all around the world, the server felt so much more alive because people were just talking shit in world chat all day and it was just memeing, it was super fun. Very, very fun. This is this is good stuff, man. Like a lot of this is like, dude. Okay, man, dude, part of me feels, part of me feels like they're trying to give us mostly like what I as a, personally as a player, what I kind of wanted in 2019. Part of me feels that. I'm like, wait, are we finally getting what I wanted in 2019? Like, do, do I go back? Do I play it? Do I, do I run it back one more time? Uh, uh, you know, part, part of me, part of that's there for me. And then the other part of me is like, just waiting to get disappointed. <laughs> part of me is just, just waiting to get disappointed. Just, <laughs> just like, you know, we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. I did dust off the old Crusade Discord server earlier today. Character transfers on the anniversary. Transfers will be unavailable except for transfers to a normal realm for hardcore characters. 
Normal realm characters must remain on normal. PvP must be locked into PvP. I don't like this. I think this is something that they should they should uh, they should change. So I think that back in the day, normal they didn't they actually said this publicly. They didn't want people going from normal servers. I have a very vivid memory of this happening, and I don't even re re remember where it happened. But they said we lifted the restriction because people know what the game is now. And, and originally, people didn't know what a normal server was and what a PvP server was. So they didn't want a situation where somebody is playing on a normal server, they transfer to a PvP server, and then they're getting ganked all the time, and now they're miserable and they want to transfer back. That was what the original reasoning was, to not allow this. Now, fast forward to today, that's not that's a non-issue. People, people know what they're going to expect. Information is much more readily available. But there is a new issue that now comes about that probably would, be, would have been less of an issue back in the day. And that issue is, well, what if people level on a PvE server because they don't want to get ganked and then they transfer to a PvP server as soon as they hit 60 and then you're, you're kind of deleting the population of that server. It's just weird and not healthy. My solution to that would be allow the transfers. There's a time limit a time minimum from the point in which you make your character. So like, let's say you create your character, you can't transfer a normal to a PVP server for like three months. Like you have to wait at least three months, maybe two months. I don't know, but, but some period of time, arbitrary period of time. I miss your opinion on dual spec. What do you think? I personally have not been a big fan of dual spec. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world, right? I don't think it's like the end of the world or ruins the game or anything. I just think that it's, as much as I hate the slippery slope argument, I think it's one of the very few times where it can be a part of like the additive sort of slippery slope type thing. I'm not a huge fan. I'm gonna benefit from it greatly, immensely. I'm gonna be res I'm gonna be dual respecking constantly all day every day because that's, that's how I play. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think I think it's not gonna be the end of the world. Uh, cannot go from PVE to PVP. That's unfair to easy level and then plop over. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you give them a period of time, like three months. That's a long time to have to, <laughs> to have to transfer. Uh, allowing hardcore players to transfer to PvP will allow faction balance bypass. I'll be honest. I think if you're playing on hardcore, you should have the choice of PvE or PvP. I don't think it should you should be locked into PvE if you're hardcore. Because because there's a lot of people that like they want to PvP, but they're only not PvPing because they're specifically playing hardcore. I, I I really think that they should change that. If nothing else, all the other stuff that I'm saying, if nothing else, they they should change that. Because they're the only reason they're playing PvE is because they're playing this specific hardcore rule set which has to be played on a PvE server. Otherwise, they, uh, otherwise they'd be PvE, or PvP, excuse me. Maybe a hardcore PvP dedicated server would be fine. Question mark? <laughs> That'd be the worst. Actually, it'd be kind of funny. <laughs> it'd be the worst server. <laughs> it'd be kind of funny. Um, enforced faction balance on the PvP realms. In Season of Discovery, we implemented enforced faction balance on all PvP realms. This means the population of Horde and Alliance characters on each PvP realm remains almost perfectly balanced. They're going to be hands-on with faction imbalance. We already know this. GDKP, they said, hey, GDKP is being nixed in Season of Discovery. has been a overall positive for the community. We're going to keep that up. Uh, in the in the North America and the European regions, they've already said this. Um, in China, it's going to they're going to keep GDKPs in China, I believe. Yeah. So NA and EU, and and that includes, dude. They forgot about they forgot about Oceania, dude. What about my Australian homies? What about what about my New Zealand homies, dude? What the hell? Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we got to play with different thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're included in this. And whenever they say NAEU, they also mean Oceania. Uh, and we do reserve the right to change this. Here's like, it's crazy that they have to say this. We reserve the right to change this, because technically they reserve the right to change whatever they want, right, as their game. Uh, so I've made a character right now on Classic Sod. Do I need to make a new one in a few days? Yeah, it's a different server. Yeah, it's a different server. Different server, different rule set. Okay, so the next thing, uh, we talked about this. This is the stuff that was added today. And this is the other thing. Ooh, there is so much to talk about, man. There is so much. To, it's going to be a second video. There's going to be a second video coming because I, I do have to go. Second, It's got to be a second video highlighting the other two parts of this. Yeah, we already talked about like the original message. We, we talked about the amendment. Yeah. We got, we're going we're gonna to do, do a second video. Uh, and I, I haven't really looked at the other stuff quite yet, but stay tuned because I will. Uh, that'll be in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll make a second video talking about all the other stuff. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Everything is SFAN TV, YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, everything is SFAN TV. Wow, who is back? Wow, is back, baby. Except for the other two channels, SFAN Daily, the Clips channel, 
and uh, Coach S Fan, which I'm moving the sports content to the Coach S Fan YouTube channel. So make sure to sub to those two if you like the Madden stuff and all the CFB. And if you like the tailgates, if you like all that stuff, that's going on that channel. And uh, if that goes well, maybe we're going to spin off and keep making more channels and, and kind of organize the content better that way. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.